The Enduro World Series is arguably one of the toughest things you can do on a mountain bike and something that really differentiates it from cross country and downhill racing is that the racers have to be fully self-sufficient once they're out on the course. When the racing first started it wasn't uncommon to see racers carrying big helmets on the back of huge bags like this with a massive amount of spares, loads of water, components, all that sort of stuff. But over the years things have changed. But in more recent times, we see the riders are carrying nothing at all as they're starting to favor more onboard bike storage systems. So I'm gonna show you the most minimal approach first. And I'll jump in a bit later. So I'm gonna take you through some of the tools that I take on my bike and how I whittle it down to the bare minimum for carrying on a race. So when I'm thinking about tools on my bike, I'm thinking about racing and I'm thinking about where I want the tools and how quickly I can access them. So something like a puncture is something that's really likely to happen during a race. And it's also something that's really gonna cost me time if it happens. So any puncture repair I want easily accessed straight away so I can get it done and carry on. So I've got a Topeak Ninja here, which is just Velcroed to the top tube, and I can access the puncture repair strips for my tubeless system really quickly. And I've got a CO2 cartridge on the other side, which I can access from the other side really quickly as well. So it's super fast and super convenient when I'm racing. So you can achieve something similar to this with some Velcro or even taping your CO2 cartridges and your puncture repair system to your top tube or your down tube or even the back of your seat tube is a really good place. Now I actually bring a pump as well as this. I've got it stored in the down tube here but you can get attachments for your bottle cages which keep a pump near to hand. And the reason I do this, as well as bringing a CO2 canister, is basically just for backup. Between race stages, you might want to add or take away some pressure. So having a gauge on your pump is really useful for making sure that you've got the right PSI for you to be riding comfortably on. Now, I've obviously got a tube here, Velcroed to my seat tube. And that's not because I need quick access to it. It just saves a bit of space in my down tube, basically. But it is there for that extra backup. If any of my plugs don't work in my tubeless puncture repair kit, then at least I know I've got a tube which I can fit between race stages as well. So I'm really lucky that my Rallon comes with built-in down tube storage. But if you don't have that with your existing bike, then you can get top tube mounted bags, which are a really great storage solution. So I'm also super lucky that there's some tools built into the Rallon as well. I've got all my Allen keys that I need for all of the bolts on my bike. But if you don't have this, then you can get some aftermarket solutions some which require tapping your steerer tube and some which can fit into your handlebars. But when you're choosing your system, make sure that all of the keys match all of the bolts on your bike. Otherwise, you might end up a little bit stranded in the middle of nowhere, not being able to fix your entire bike. So on my rear axle, I've got a six mil Allen key hidden away. I've also got a valve core tightener as well. Now, you'd be surprised how often a valve core becomes loose anytime you're pumping up your tires, especially if you've got pumps that screw in. But if you don't have one of those, then you can get valve caps that have core tighteners as well. So this is everything I keep in my down tube. It seems like a lot, but actually all of these spares, they don't weigh that much. So it's always worth bringing them. Things like spare pads, just in case anything goes wrong with the ones you've got in. You may make it to the bottom of a race stage, but you're gonna need to replace them between those stages to make sure you can keep going for an all day ride. 
So this is a habit I've got into, is putting gaffer tape on my pumps. It doesn't weigh anything, it doesn't get in the way, but it could be super useful for fixing broken waterproofs or attaching things to the bike, or I've actually fixed a split sidewall with one of these before. You can also double it over to make a tire boot. A spare mech hanger is an absolute must. It weighs nothing, but if you bash your derailleur on a rock, then your gears aren't gonna be working for the rest of the day. So make sure you get one of these, which is specific to your frame, and always, always bring it. Next up is spare brake pads, and I cover them up so that they don't get contaminated or dirty, and a spare inner cable, because you don't wanna be without gears, you don't wanna be without a dropper post, and you don't wanna be without brakes. So they're two essentials that really don't weigh anything, so you might as well bring them. Also a spare link if your chain snaps, well, you're not gonna be pedaling anywhere. So always bring a spare link. And if you don't have a chain breaker somewhere on your bike, then shove that in your pack too. Next up, for the sake of a couple of grams, this could be a lifesaver. This is my little pack of emergencies. I've got a spare bolt that fits to every part of my bike. I've got brake bolts, I've got bottle cage bolts. I've even got some spare cores in case one flies out and I never find it again. These don't weigh a lot, so it's worth bringing them because it could save your ride. Now, a spoke isn't essential, um, but if you've got a place to put a spare spoke, it could save your wheel in a big holiday or a big ride somewhere out in the middle of nowhere. I've got one of these emergency spokes. It's not ideal, uh, but it will fit almost any wheel and it will get you home basically. Uh, next up, I've got some levers just in case I can't take a tire off by hand. These things, they barely weigh anything and they're not taking up much space, so I'll always bring them just in case. I've also got a spare end plug. I ride with grips with end plugs and I don't wanna be crashing on handlebars without an end plug. This weighs nothing, barely takes up any space, so always, always bring one of those if you run end plugs. Next up is just bits of Velcro and cable ties. You never know when you're gonna need these, either attaching stuff to the bike temporarily or fixing things completely. If you don't have a derailleur hanger, for example, then sometimes you can get away with zip tying your derailleur to your frame and getting home, even if it's just single speed. And the great thing about Velcro straps is not only am I attaching my tube, or you could even attach your puncture repair kit and your tube to your frame, but they come in super handy for fixing things or temporary attachments, like if you grab some food from a petrol station or something, you can attach it to your bike and not have it in your pockets. So I'm gonna start with a full-size hydration pack, seeing as this really is where the whole EWS thing started. The riders on their huge days out involved riding these massive liaisons, so that's the transition stages, and had to be self-supported, of course, to get across those stages to the next time sections. As a result, they needed the capability to carry different helmets on their bags as well. They wanted to have a downhill style helmet for maximum protection on the big stages, uh, but they wanted a lightweight helmet for those big liaisons. So having the capability to carry a helmet on a bag was one of the most important things. And of course, having a bag that's ventilated and has a back protector built in was an additional benefit. Not to mention the fact you've got your hydration bladder built in there, so you don't need to carry stuff on your bike. And of course, you've got capabilities to carry everything with you. Now, here's a good example of some of the stuff that I would carry on a full-size bag. Now, I always carry a small little pouch, and on the inside of the pouch, I keep my tubeless repair gear. Now, this is something quite important to talk about because of the fact that these are extremely sharp, and it wouldn't take much to have an accident and accidentally penetrate yourself with one. <laughs> Okay, so I've got a selection of gear that I would take on a big day out and they all fit comfortably inside here, allowing me to also take like a waterproof jacket, spare layers, a beanie perhaps, things like that. 
So I'll start with my puncture repair kit to start with, and I carry a tubeless kit on the inside of a pouch. This will have CO2 cartridges in here. Uh, I'll carry tire boots and also some repair patches in here. Loads of the little uh, tubeless plugs, and of course the actual plugs and reamers for the actual getting the tubeless worms into the tires. Now carrying it inside one here, it's like a secondary protection because you could stab yourself with one of those in a crash. So it's a good idea to carry that stuff in a pouch. Also means less faffing, trying to find it at the bottom of your bag. Needless to say, you're gonna need a multi-tool. You don't need a multi-tool with all of the tools in the world. Pick the ones that are actually gonna be beneficial for what you can fix and what you need on your bike. I like to carry an eight millimeter Allen key as a separate Allen key because if by chance my pedals came loose or something like that on the bike, I've got the Allen key fit for purpose with me rather than trying to use one of the small eight mil bits you can get on some multi-tools. Now the most important thing I look for is a chain tool with a twin tab function on here. So a twin tab chain tool enables you to split a chain, rejoin a chain, and also remove a stiff link if you need to. So it's a really valuable tool to have. And of course I've got Torx T25 on there for disc rotors and all the usual Allen keys. So nothing too big, but it's a really usable one. So make sure whatever multi-tool you're carrying is actually useful for the things that you need. Decent mini pump, goes without saying. CO2 you should only really use in a race or an absolute necessity, you know, a downpour or if you're risking getting hypothermia, etc. Uh, you shouldn't unnecessarily use those, not to mention the fact that they can mess with tums, some tyre sealant. Uh, the CO2 by nature can dry it up, so try and avoid those unless you absolutely have to. Mini pump is your best way. This one's a double action pump with a large volume capability. Um, no frills pump, not much to say about that. Always carry a pump with you. I actually carry a shock pump with me as well. Uh, I don't usually end up needing it, but I've come across people before on the trail that have needed it, so it's not much to carry if you're taking a big bag. Okay, next up, of course, cable ties. Always carry a bunch of these because they can be used to strap any number of things on your bike, or if your clothing tears, any number of repairs. Such a good thing. Chain master links. Now I always have one of these, the relevant one for the bike I'm riding, taped onto the handlebars so I can just forget about it. But I'll always keep a spare of each, a SRAM and a Shimano one, in a riding pack. Now do remember that these generally are single use. So if you do split one, yes, arguably you can reuse it to get home with, but you need to remember they are single use. There's a very good chance they will fail. Fresh ones are a necessity. In a tube, even if you run tubeless and you've got downhill tires, at some point, you're gonna to need to use an inner tube or perhaps give one to someone that needs to carry on with you. I carry a couple of different tapes with me, uh, just some duct tape, this one's just silver randomly, but this stuff is amazing. So I don't know the name of this product. I have loads of this left over from when I did my house renovation and it's used to stick the Celotex insulation together. This is the stickiest tape I've ever come across. And if you need to fix a tire with a tire boot, this stuff will stick to virtually anything. Uh, just super good stuff. Tire levers, these ones are toe peak and they can actually be used to split a chain master link as well. Uh, you can pull them apart to use them as independent tire levers. And you can also store a chain master link on there and a third hand tool. Uh, so if you're gonna carry a tire lever, it might be a good idea to carry something like that that can be used for additional things. Pair of gloves, uh, you can carry nitrile gloves, latex gloves, or just reusable mechanics gloves like these. Uh, they'll get you home if you need to wear gloves as well and you're not wearing them perhaps, uh, but obviously stop your hands getting dirty when you fix your bike. And finally, I carry a small knife if I need to trim the cable ties down. Also, it's just a utility knife, so it's quite handy. And I carry one of these small Nipex Cobra pair of pliers. Now these things are absolutely amazing and they're so strong and so stiff considering the compact size of them. Something that these are especially good for in this size, uh, obviously you can carry the bigger ones with more leverage, but these I've straightened a rim with before when I've dinged a rim. So that actually as a race tool is a really sensible thing to carry with you. And now for the more compact setup, which is actually what I favor for most of my riding. Now I use a hip pack, this particular one by Camelback, you can actually stash a bottle in it, but I don't always use this. Sometimes I choose to use the bottle cage on my bike, like the one behind me, and I can actually use this space for other things. In the UK, that's normally stashing a waterproof jacket in that space, so it can still be used quite well. Now you've got two side pockets, they're pretty useful in terms of size and what you can reach for. So I'll take the same pouch with a tubeless repair kit set up, tire boots, uh, CO2 cartridges, but when I'm going out with this pack, I'll take two CO2 cartridges 
and sometimes I'll take a mini pump. So you can strap the mini pump on the bottom of the pack, but what I tend to do is actually carry this on the little mount by the bottle cage on my bike. It means I don't have to worry about that too much. And to be fair, if it's a shorter ride, I'll actually chance not taking the pump at all and just have the CO2s as an absolute get me home. I'll take a compact inner tube rather than a full size one that I would take in a full size bag. This one's by Tubalito. It weighs almost nothing and it crumbles up to a tiny space. Now, even if you can't fit this in a bag, you could put this in a little plastic bag and zip tie it under your saddle there, out the way, and just keep one on the bike. They're so tiny, like really useful things. I'll also stash in a load of cable ties, a small little Nipex pair of pliers, the same tie levers that do the, the chain function there, and of course, joining chain links. And all of that fits comfortably in size here, and it doesn't hamper the ride. Some of you might be saying, where's the multi-tool? Well, I sometimes carry multi-tool in here, but more often than not, I carry the one on the bottle cage on my bike. Um, I'm lucky enough on that bike that it fits the bottle cage and that's the sort of bike that I'll be out for riding longer and I can fit a multi-tool in there with a chain tool on it so it's always on the bike. Uh, something handy to look out for and it does enable me to carry a mixture of things between myself and the bike uh, without having anything overloaded too much. As an upside, I can also fit my favourite little camera in this side pocket here, uh, documenting my ride on the way, and I can still fit my phone in my pocket. So, pretty handy by all accounts for a tiny little bag. Okay, so there's three different ways to carry a variety of tools and supplies when you're out riding. Uh, as I explained in the video, I love to use a hip pack. It gives me all the freedom I need to carry what I want, combined with a bottle on the bike. What about you? Well, I prefer the onboard storage because I love the freedom and the coolness out on holiday. So yeah, that's a winner for me. Let us know what your preferred solutions are for carrying gear on your bikes. And actually, let us know what you're actually carrying when you head out on the trails as well. I'd love to know, as always, get involved in the comments. And we'll see you soon in the next video. ta -ra.